I talk with my hands. It's just who I am. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I am Allison Pointer. I go by Allie. I coach the defensive line here at Austin East Magnet High School. I think a lot of the memories I have about women in sports uh, relates around the Olympics because I've always loved watching the Olympics. Um, it seems like the male sports there always had like a bigger focus and a bigger drive than the female sports did. And I think in college a lot, like I noticed, you know, Katie Ledecky um, was a big swimmer and Michael Phelps always overshadowed her. Like she was always in his shadow. And there's also uh, tennis players like Serena who have always been in the shadow of her male counterparts. And so I've noticed that, I guess throughout like my high school, college, and adult career that women are in sports are kind of just not really focused upon. Lino! 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 So about three years ago, we were going around asking different coaches in the building, would you be interested in coaching football? went around who I thought would be interested and I was receiving no's from everybody. Uh, heard that Coach Pointer was playing rugby, so I went to her one day. I said, hey, would you ever consider coaching football? And her eyes lit up. I was like, okay, you know what? Uh, coach found some coaches to bring in, obviously, and we didn't hire her back then, but when I was named the head coach, I remembered that conversation. Went back to her and asked her, and because rugby was suspended due to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, she was open to coach, and we asked her to come aboard. I played rugby, started playing rugby when I graduated college um, here for a team called the Knoxville Minks. That's really inspired me to stay in sports and stay active. Um, I think Coach Mace giving me that opportunity to coach here at AE is really like the go-getter of me being able to do this. Um, it's not usually what happens, but I was very, very lucky and very fortunate that he gave me that opportunity. I, I can tell you what the conversation I did have with her was about coaching football. I saw the passion in her eyes. You know, I learned a long time ago uh, from my grandfather and from playing football, the eyes don't lie. A person's body language and their mouth may say something, but if you make eye contact, you know, you can use the spirit of discernment to find out that person is telling you the truth. She has a passion inside of her. I don't know if you've watched our practice, but you can see it in our practice. When I went to college, I wanted to start off as pre-med, and I did. And I worked at a nursing home, and after working in the nursing home, I quickly changed my mind and switched to secondary education science, because I took so many science courses, I was like, this will just be really great. Um, and then after graduating college, I got my job here at AE and started my master's degree at the University of Tennessee, Knoxville in STEM education. And I received that in 2019. I'm in Ms. Pointer my freshman year in the science hallway of our school. And I never had Ms. Pointer's class, but I always ended up in the class somehow even though I never had her. So that helped build that relationship. So I've known her for been in my high school career. She's the same person, but when she's coasting, she's more passionate than I believe she can be in a classroom. Green and eight! Green and eight! Side, eight. With a teacher-student relationship, is different from a coach-athlete. With coach-athlete, you're with that person every day, and you rely on that person to get the information to you, and you rely on that person to make sure that you can trust her and you can trust him. So I really haven't had an issue connecting with my players. Um, for example, one of my D linemen, he knows that I played rugby when he had me in biology last year. So he would ask other questions similar to, um, hey, Miss Pointer, what's your deadlift, Max? And he would get upset when mine was heavier than his. And he'd be like, I have to work harder. You know, and I was like, that was inspiring to me that I'm, I inspired someone else to work harder. Like, that was a big thing and now I'm coaching him. And so like, I actually get to have more of those conversations with him of like, hey, I know you can do better. Like, pick up this heavier weight. Like, I know you can do it. You're cheating me right now. And then I'll do it with him sometimes too. So I don't really see um, that I don't fit in. If, if I do, the boys don't, the, my players don't make me feel that way. My coaching staff doesn't make me feel that way. They've been so open and so awesome with helping me. So it's been great. Me personally, I've never been coached by a female, but since she's came out, I don't believe it's different from any other man doing it. She brings the same intensity, the same passion, the same charisma as any other coach. I said reload late. Football 
and I'm sure it's like this in any other game, you can learn the X's and O's. And she's doing that right now. She's been in coaching clinics. I myself am a former defensive line coach. I had a buddy of mine that I played ball with that was doing a coaching clinic, and she went to both of them. So she's learning the X's and O's. That's not important. Any coach that tells you that, full of him or herself, you know what I mean? What's important is that you have a heart for the kids, that you're in the building that you work for and you're willing to work. Pointer is a hard working coach. That's what makes her a good coach. My coaching staff is phenomenal. If it wasn't for Coach Mays, Coach Defer, Coach Smith, Coach Violet, um, and like Coach Chesney, Coach Mo, and like if I didn't have those people, I don't think I would be successful. So you know, you need to surround yourself with people who are positive. You need to surround yourself with people who are there to help you and help you learn. We have a lot in the world right now where they expect you to like already know it, and I don't. Like I'm learning as I go as well, and they have been so great. And I, it's it's that positivity, it's that helpful culture that I have with my staff and my players. My players will also call me out and be like, Coach Pointer, you're wrong. Okay, okay. The one and only, we out here and we getting it, baby. Hey. I come from my mother's an ordained minister. I have women in my family that are executives. I, leadership doesn't have a doesn't have a gender, and leadership doesn't have a race. Leadership is a quality. And I saw that in her. So to say that I was trying to be progressive to get a woman out here and do it, that's not, that's not what it was. I walked around asking people to coach that were in the building. She's in the building. She had a passion for our kids and she wanted to learn how to coach. That's all I needed. I'm sad that women have to work twice as hard to be recognized. It's not fair, um, but it's a fight that we have to fight every day. So, you know, we're doing it. Because if we didn't fight the fight, we wouldn't be recognized, you know. Um, if we didn't fight this good fight, if we didn't fight the good fight, it wouldn't be recognized. It's like a lot of the issues going on today, you know. If we just silenced ourselves and did nothing, nothing would be heard. Like any other coach, I feel like she's a mentor to not only me, but everybody else on this team. And her being a female really shows a different demographic of people. Like, no matter who you are, you can come out and you can do anything if you want to, if you try, if you believe you can do it. Um, I don't want this to be seen as like a huge groundbreaking thing. I want it to be seen as more as acceptance that like women are here, women can do it. I, I don't think gender has anything to do with coaching. I think male, female, non-binary, if you're ready to go out here and you have the opportunity to do it, you need to take that opportunity and do it.